Good to know you're still with us on The Breakfast. Now, uh, we'll be talking about today in history. Um, I was preempting things with the International Day for Persons Living with Disability. That is an important conversation. Uh, but before we get to that, let's uh, take a look at what happened today in history. Absolutely. I'm going to start with uh, something that we had earlier mentioned, and it is a very funny uh, story of a, a president's phone call, a president-elect's phone call, that was dropped twice before it was uh, eventually, uh, you know, he was eventually spoken with. In two, uh, 2008, her name is Elena Ross Lithinen, um, who was, um, uh, well, who got a call from President-elect Barack Obama uh, back then. Um, she, the first time she picked a call, um, it was from an aide, uh, you know, who told her Barack Obama wanted to speak with her, and she hung up. The second time um, the call came in, it was then from the soon-to-be chief of staff of uh, President Obama, his name uh, Ram Emanuel, who told her once again that President Obama wanted to speak with her, and she once again hung up. Uh, she only got to you know make or take that phone call after um, a member of the House you know spoke with her and said once again that President elect Barack Obama wanted to speak with her. So it's an interesting thing because you know I I've um, always been fascinated with the direct relationship that you know presidents and elected officials have with their um, um, with the people who put them in power. If you if you've watched Obama um, a is lot, a different kind of yeah, president, yes, but, but it's in, not just him. You know, I've, I've also seen a lot of people who are vying for electoral positions who go from house to house to try to campaign. You know, meet with the people, speak with them. You know, personally, uh, try to sell the ideas to them. There are times when you know these persons don't want to listen to what they have to say. They shut the on them, but they still go on to you know sell their uh, their um, campaign to them, and so you know it's always very interesting when I hear things like this. Uh, yeah. The reason um, Elena um, you know didn't want to speak with President Obama back then was because she felt it was a prank. Yeah, she so said, radio stations. <laughs> eh, I was guilty of it. <laughs> uh, we do prank calls. It's fun. It adds some spice to life so it when it is to. nice. Yes. yes. So she. she she very much, you know, I believe it is an uh, avid radio listener and had heard a lot of radio pranks, uh, you know, over time. And she felt this was just another prank. There's no way the president-elect will be calling her. Calling her. But apparently That was the same. Like, I, I was smiling all through reading um, about, she's a phenomenal woman. Uh, she's a Republican congresswoman who has held the position for, you know, years and years, originally from uh, Miami. She's also um, a lobbyist. Um, she um, represented Florida's 27th congressional district from 1989 to 2019. So she's now a senior citizen, yes. uh, still contributing, but you know, on a low-key uh, level. We just uh, needed to uh, mention that. Do it here in Nigeria. Yeah. Some team we what, 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 eh? what would be your SSS reaction? SSS or DSS will be at your door. <laughs> Not, not necessarily, you know, but what would be your reaction if, just, you know, I'm if the president calls around. you, you know, if the president-elect calls you and says, you know, uh, hi, you know, Kunle or Fumi or, you know, whatever your name is and says, you know, this is president-elect uh, Muhammadu Buhari, uh, what would your reaction be? Are you going to be excited or would you fear that you well, may have... Well, until it happens, I can't say how I would react. It depends on who the president is. Okay, that's one of the things that happened today um, in history. The other thing that happened today was the transplant. Yes, they talked about uh, Benny Clark, um, who in 1983 um, got the first artificial heart, successful first artificial heart transplant. Today, we're talking about something prior to that artificial heart implant, and that's in 1967, a South African doctor. Let me just that, put it out there. The that that it's, me the most. It's, 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 sorry? That's the part that excites me the most, the, the fact that he's, a, he's South African. That is where I was going. Let me, I just wanted to put it out there and repeat. This is from Africa. Yes, <laughs> Dr. Christian Bennett performed the world's first human um, to human heart transplant. Um, at a hospital in Cape Town, he transplanted the heart 
of um, an accident victim, Dennis Davel, into the chest of 54-year-old Louis Washkansky. Uh, it was a major historic event and a significant breakthrough for medical science. Yes, um, a little bit of a background here. Um, Bernard had been practicing trying, you know, doing innovation. He has for a decade uh, been working on how to successfully transplant um, um, heart from uh, one person uh, to another. Uh, this was done on this day. The woman just died the night out of the second and um, in, almost immediately the transfer was done. Now, although the first heart transplant patient survived only 18 days, um, Four of the hospital's first 10 patients survived for more than a year. Uh, two lived for 13 and 23 years, respectively. Uh, this relative success, amid many failures worldwide, did much to generate um, some guarded optimism that heart transplantation would eventually become a viable uh, therapeutic option for those who have um, uh, had a serious heart uh, condition. Um, it's also important to say that it just the dedication of the men um, in this team, his, his looks wasn't bad as well. They said <laughs> it's, uh, the media was also talking about how something so fine can bring something so fine yeah. at the end of the day. The two, relentless uh, work. Two angles, you know, from the story that I want to, you know, quickly address is, first of all, the, you know, the idea of living for 20 years with the heart of another human being. Um, is phenomenal. It, it just is, you know, hard to imagine that these things are possible, uh, that you can go on and carry on with your life with another human being's heart. Mm -hmm. In case they were very wicked, you might turn out to be a wicked person. After that is not trans. true. Well, that okay. is so it's not, not okay. true. Okay. What if they were um, there is this music. It, when I was reading this story, um, there is this music that came to my mind. It was, I think, 2018. It was released in 2018. Um, as, um, something about someone you used to love. It was mm -hmm. a, a man whose wife died and the heart was transplanted to save another woman who had little children. Yes. It's, it's a, a fantastic, you know, something um, that we will continue to be grateful for. Uh, loads of people have had a uh, heart transplant and live a very um, healthy and successful you know, uh, life. Uh, her, her, some, the second angle also was the, the part where it was her father uh, the, the father of the woman who suffered, you know, the, who, you know, was in an accident and was uh, declared brain, uh, had serious brain damage. It Authorized. was her father who agreed uh, that, you know, the, her heart and her kidneys can be donated, you know, to, you know, some other person. Um, and Me, you know, I'm I found, putting my I found own out very, there. Very interesting. I'm hoping that I don't die before my time, but if anything happens, this is open permission. Take all the body parts you need. <laughs> all right. Um, today, just quickly to mention, we're almost out of time. Um, I, I felt this is necessary to mention because if you look at the chronology of um, Asu Strike, it seems on the ending. One minute they're talking really tough. Like today in history in 2013, uh, Nigerian lecturers vowed to press on with a six-month-old strike. The vow came after the then education minister, Yesom Wike, threatened to dismiss lecturers who do not turn up uh, for work. I remember that story uh, vaguely. Um, the reason for the strike in 2013, please, is that uh, of government failure to review retirement age uh, from 65 to 70 years, approve funding to revitalize the university system, increase the budgetary allocations to the education sector, by 15 to 20 percent, among other demands. Uh, the strike began in July um, 2013 and was called off on December 17, 17. 2013. Yeah. Now, what I found intriguing was the fact that you vowed today that you will not shake in spite of threats from the government and then in less than yeah um, um it was also rumored the union leaders were you know had then started to mention that some of the agreements or you know financial part of the agreement had been met by the government mm -hmm. that the government had paid uh, 1.3 billion dollars into a cbn account then, i just wanted to say um, today we're still on strike <laughs> as we're still on strike nobody knows when we're going for to similar challenges uh, end it uh, so yes
that's where we are at. Thank you so Hello. much. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.